It was the first step in a nuclear nightmare. A government official said that a breakdown in an atomic power plant near the day is probably the worst nuclear reactor accident to date. The reactor was located 35 miles from downtown Los Angeles. It was called the Sodium Reactor Experiment, or SRE, built for the government by Atomics International. Atomics International. The Susanna reactor started producing power at 7.30 p.m. November 12, 1957, for the first time in the United States. An entire community was illuminated by electricity generated by an atomic reactor. But less than two years after that dramatic send-off, something went wrong. Some of the fuel rods partially melted, melted, melted. Students working with me at UCLA came across records of the uh, partial meltdown. meltdown. When it melts, radioactive materials can be released. And the evidence is crystal clear there was melting, meltdown, meltdown. Atomics International. It began operating in 1957. The accident happened in 1959. The SRE's most troublesome run began July 12, 1959. By the next day, the power was rising for no apparent reason. The control rods failed to stop it. Failed to stop it. The reactor failed, 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 failed to shut itself down, 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 down. down. Reports show the operators did not know what was wrong. wrong they decided wrong. the power excursion had not affected the reactor adversely. So they started it up again, 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 again. Re reactor meltdown, I was there, had the opportunity to experience all these things firsthand. Atomics International. Every 24 hours, roughly, they would shut down the reactor and then restart again. Atomics International. And every time they shut the reactor down, more radiation was released from the reactor out into the atmosphere, out into the atmosphere. The whole building at one time got contaminated from brick and fuel rod. We couldn't get around the building for about almost two miles, two miles, two miles. Furniture from the offices went right out in the back of that, that pile there. And records, 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 records are hard to find. That's where they are. They went right there and they got thrown away. And all that was out in the open, off to the atmosphere, and it was leaking out radiation, 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 radiation. Atomics International, which operates the plant, attempted to minimize the seriousness of the accident, saying the public was never in danger. But the company's statements have not answered several important questions. How much radioactivity has already escaped from the plant? Marvin Fox, Marvin Fox told us he couldn't say anything, say anything. Say anything. That we're investigating about the devastating Woolsey fire. Fire. It's the smoke. Toxic. Toxic. There's mounting evidence that the fire started at the Santa Susana Field Lab. It's an area that is still highly contaminated with radioactive waste. Documents just obtained by the I-Team show the substation is located inside the Santa Susana Field Lab. Is the smoke toxic? Will there be an independent investigation of the air, smoke, and air? Is the smoke toxic? What can be in the smoke and is presumably there is radionuclides plus um, chemical toxins, radionuclides plus chemical toxins, chemical toxins, radionuclides plus chemical toxins. Atomics International.